Jerusalem, the holy city. Nowhere on earth has inspired such love, hatred, and passion. For thousands of years, people have come here to meet with their God. Jerusalem, they believe, is a gateway to heaven. Here, they're as close as they can physically be to the divine. But although they worship the same God, they do so in different ways. One God has inspired three great religions. All three love Jerusalem, but all three have claimed it as their own. city has been conquered, destroyed, and rebuilt over 20 times in 30 centuries. In the Middle Ages, there were maps which placed Jerusalem at the center of the known world. And in some ways, the world has not changed. No city has a greater concentration of journalists. A stone is thrown here, a shot is fired, and the news reverberates around the globe. This dusty Middle Eastern town can still capture the imagination like nowhere else. This is the story of people past and present who have tried to make sense of this town, to understand its power, to live with its holiness. Personally, I can touch my relationship with God to the extent that I can touch these stones because these stones have been standing here listening to the prayers of mankind, most particularly Jews, for thousands of years. Packed between the stones of the wall are countless messages and prayers. The city has appointed a special mailman to deal with the thousands of letters that arrive each week in Jerusalem, addressed to God. People from all over the world write to us in about 90 languages. Usually people have different questions to God and they ask for help. What I do is to take those wishes, those letters, to the waning wall. Directly above the western wall stands a magnificent Islamic shrine. The Dome of the Rock was completed in the year 691, when Jerusalem was ruled by the Muslims. Within its walls can still be found the bare pinnacle of the mountain. Central to the faith of Muslims and Jews, it is believed that here, on this rock, Abraham offered his son as a sacrifice to God. This shrine was built in his honor. The Jews call this rock Evan Hestia, the stone of foundation. 
They believed that this is the point from which the world was created and that it lay at the very heart of their temple. This rock also lies at the heart of the Islamic faith, where it is known as El Sakra. According to the Quran, the Prophet Muhammad was brought here one night on a winged horse. He climbed onto the rock and ascended to heaven, where he conversed with the ten great prophets of Islam and Allah himself. He then returned to earth, remounted his horse, and flew back to Mecca, all before daybreak. Four hundred yards away, the bells ring out at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the center of the third faith of Abraham, Christianity. Within this building's walls lies another holy rock, the Rock of Golgotha, upon which it is believed Christ was crucified, and the Holy Sepulchre, the site of his tomb. Jerusalem is also a real earthly city. Around its core sprawl shopping centers, modern suburbs and bypasses. But it is the ancient walled city at the very center of Jerusalem that is its heart. Within its walls lives one of the most diverse communities in the world. Muslims, Christians and Jews live packed together in an area of less than a square mile. Four groups have their own quarter. The Christians, the Jews, the Muslims and the Armenians. Each have their own shops and markets established over the centuries. But it is impossible for any of them to live totally in isolation. And in Jerusalem, it is also impossible to escape from the city's history, from its long and often violent past. <laughs> 